To find a written version of this tutorial as well as some animated GIFs to go along with it, use the link on screen now in the description below or by going to clubcrochet.com slash grass. Hey there, I'm Louie, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to crochet grass using a stitch called the loop stitch and a couple of things that I use it for. So first off, this is a huge patch of grass that I've crocheted. It kind of looks like a rug, uh, and you can see that it is crocheted. If you look at the back, you can see it's all crocheted. Um, so yeah, I use this for a bunch of different things. Most notably, I use it for the top of my pieces, my set pieces for Stitched. So Stitched is a tabletop game where you crochet all your pieces, and you can also crochet a board to play on. Uh, you don't need to, but you can. And so I use the grass for the top of my board pieces and for the the board itself if I ever want to play with that, which is why I have a huge piece here. I've also most recently used it for this uh, bonsai tree that I crocheted. I know it's kind of hard to see in this angle, but you can see I used it for the, the base of this bonsai tree. This pattern is relatively easy. We're basically just doing something called a loop stitch, and here's, you can see it. Uh, this is what the loop stitch looks like prior to you cutting it, and then once you have it all cut, uh, or once you have it all finished, you can cut all these loops, and they turn into just these little ends, and these ends are nice and tight and they're you can't really you can't pull them out so it's kind of it's kind of a really cool stitch so let's get this out of the way we'll talk about the materials that you need and uh, how to get going on it so for this pattern i'm using all worsted weight yarn i'm using vanish choice yarn because i find that it's the best uh for the video itself uh, here it is. You can see its thickness here. Um, but I think my favorite yarn to actually use for this stitch is Lion Brand's Heartland yarn, uh, which is what you saw that big, big piece of grass in the beginning. And the reason that it's my favorite is because I like the color and I like the fact that the color um, here, let me show you with the bonsai tree again. The color kind of is different within this piece. So there's like some lighter shades of green, some darker shades of green, which gives it more of a grassy kind of feel. So that's my favorite yarn to use on it, but you can use any kind of yarn you want. You can use cotton, acrylic, doesn't matter. Um, I personally like using a slightly bigger crochet hook. So I'm using an I9 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. All you'll need is crochet hook, yarn, and then a pair of scissors for cutting uh, the loops. Uh, so we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, you also might want a darning needle to sew in the ends. Uh, normally I like using crimped end darning needle for my amigurumi, but I'm using a straight darning needle for this one. Uh, so that's all the materials that you'll need. So let's get hooking. You're going to start, uh, yeah, let's just get hooking. So we're going to be using our worsted weight green yarn here. And we're, I'm going to try to make this as beginner friendly as possible. So we're going to start with a slip knot. For a slip knot, you're just going to thread the yarn around itself like so to make a little loop and pinch that loop and flip that over on itself. So it kind of makes a little pretzel there and pull that inside loop through which will make a slip knot. We're going to place our crochet hook into that slip knot. Now when we pull this end that's attached to the yarn, it should pull it tighter like so. Okay, so for this pattern, you're going to want to chain as many as you like the width to be. So I'm gonna make mine relatively small. So I'm just going to chain 10 here. For a chain, we're just going to yarn over and pull that yarn through the loop. So just like so, and that'll make one chain. So I'm just gonna do 10 of these but you wanna make as many as you feel uh, you want the width to be. I like making sure that I know how many I'm doing. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 to keep, you know, to keep track of it. But we're gonna be making ours relatively small. Well, let's make it a little longer. So let's do 15, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Okay, so this is how long we want our piece to be. Now, on top of these base chains, we want to add two more chains because we're going to be doing half double crochets. And when you do half double crochets, you want it to evenly uh, uh, be stacked on top of each other. So what we're going to do is we're gonna add two chains on top of our 15, so that's 16 and 17. 
For our first row, we're going to be doing half double crochets uh, and starting into the third chain from the hook. So we're going to skip these first two chains here and we're going to do half double crochet into that third one. For a half double crochet, we're going to yarn over and we're going to skip those two stitches, two chains rather, one, two, and take our crochet hook and place it under the top of that last or that third chain right here, like so. And we're going to yarn over a second time and pull that loop through the chain. So now you should have three loops on the hook and we'll yarn over and pull through all of those loops. And that will make a half double crochet. This pattern is based on the half double crochet. So pretty much as long as you've got the half double crochet, you'll kind of get the gist of, of how to do this uh, how to do this stitch. I mean, it's a little bit trickier than just a half double crochet, but it's really good base to know. So let's do another half double crochet here. So we're gonna yarn over, go into the next chain. So here's where we made our, our last one. You can see that loop is a little bit stretched out. So we wanna go into the next one right here, yarn over a second time, pull through, yarn over again, and pull through all three loops. Okay, so let's do one more of those really quick just to really understand the half double crochet. We're going to yarn over, go into the next chain over right here, yarn over again and pull through, yarn over a final time and pull through all three loops on the hook. Okay, and that'll make a half double crochet. So I'm gonna go ahead and make half double crochets all the way across here. And we should have 15 half double crochets because we, cro we chained 17 and we skipped two of those chains. So that leaves 15 chains to work into. So we should have 15 half double crochets by the end of this row. And as you can tell, I'm calling these rows because we are working in the flat, which means after each of these rows, we will be turning around and crocheting right back across, like going back and forth and turning after each row. Uh, you can crochet this pattern in the round, it is possible, but it does make it look a little strange because the grass will be very tightly um, together. So let's just finish these last two half double crochets. One last one right here. Okay, so we should have 15 half double crochets here. And we can go ahead and count. And you can count by counting the little Vs if you look at it long ways here. You can see all these V's. So we're going to count back. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. There's our last one right there. Okay, so now that we're at the end of this row, we want to turn our piece around. I always turn it the same way, so that's important. You always want to turn it this way. Don't turn it the other way. I find it's best to always make sure you're turning in the exact same direction. And now we want to chain two, just like how we added two chains in the first uh, row. We want to chain two to make sure we have the right height. So we're gonna chain two, so one and two. And now what we're going to do is a loop stitch. Now the start of it is exactly the same as the half double crochet. So we're going to yarn over and go in. We're gonna skip our first two chains. So there's one, two, skip those first two and go into that first V that's in the stitch. Now we want to go under both of these loops. So we're going to yarn over and go into both of these loops, not just the top one or the bottom one. Now, once you're into this loop, we can actually make the loop stitch. Now the loop stitch is, is definitely different than the half double crochet. So once you're into it, what you want to first do, I'm going to go very slowly and we're going to do this a few times. So bear with me. So we're going to go over the yarn, um, normally when you're making half double crochet, you'd go under it like that and, and hook onto it. But this time we're going to go over it and then we're going to go under your finger and hook onto this back part right there. Now, once you're hooked onto that back part, you want to hook your index finger of your non-dominant hand in, which will make a little loop. And you want to pull that loop under and through the, the, um, where you went into originally, the stitch you went into. Once you have pulled it through that stitch, you can transition this loop into a pinch. So you can pinch it down like so with your index and thumb of your non-dominant hand and take that and go over and then grab it with your index and middle finger. This is the easiest way I've found is grabbing it with your index and middle finger of your dominant hand and holding that over to the, to the right 
and then finishing up the half double crochet. So now we're going to finish up by yarning over with this end and just pulling, oopsies, and just pulling through the three loops on the hook. Okay, so I know that sounds really confusing, but that's gonna make it this little loop here in the back. So let's do it again, and I'll go, uh, we'll go even slower, and I'll show you a few techniques that I use um, to make sure that I'm doing it correctly. So into our next stitch right here, where again, we're going to yarn over, and we're gonna go into the next stitch right here under both of these loops. Then we're going to go over, under, Okay, I kind of like let go of my piece here. So I go over, under, only under this index finger, and then hook onto that back part, and then hook my finger in and pull that through. Now, once we're pulled through, we can transition to a pinch and take that pinch and pull it over with our dominant hand hold it over to the right side. And we want this, the end of our piece, to go under that loop. That's what's gonna keep it locked into place. And then we can yarn over with our end and pull that through all the loops on the hook. Again, this is a little tricky of a stitch to do for I would say the first round or two, but once you get going, it's very addicting. This is a very addicting stitch and I really, really enjoy doing it. So let's do it a third time here. Yarn over, go into the stitch, go over, under, hook, hook, pull through, transition to a pinch, transition that pinch to a pinch with your index and middle finger of your dominant hand, and then yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. Once you're yarned over, you can release the, the loop with your index and middle finger. Let's do it a two more times. Let's do it two more times really nice and slow. Okay, we yarn over. Let's go from more of the top angle here. Go into the next stitch, which is right here. Make sure to go under both of those loops. And then over the yarn. And then under. And we'll hook on. Pull it in. Once you got it pulled in, it, it's going to hard, be hard for it to go anywhere else. And then we can just hook it Pull it under that loop. Once you're pulled through, we can transition that to a pinch. Transition it to the other hand. And then we can yarn over. Once we're yarned over, I can let go and just pull that loop through three loops on the hook. And you can see these loops are gonna probably, probably be different uh, sizes, but that doesn't matter at all, especially because we're gonna be cutting these loops to make the grass. And these are tight, these are in there. So once you cut the loops, they're not going anywhere. You can't, you can't really get them out. So let's do it one last time right here. You can see our little hole right there. We yarn over, go into the loop, and we go over, under, hook, and then hook, pull it through, transition to a pinch, take that pinch, transition, transition it to the other hand, then yarn over and pull through all three of those loops to lock it into place. So we want to do loop stitches all the way across. So there should be 15 total. So we've already done five, so we'll do 10 more. And I'll just keep talking through uh, different things as I'm making it. Um, so this pattern is is pretty cool because you can make um, you can make these loops however long that you want. So for example, let me do a next stitch here and I'll try to make the loop really big. So I'll go into the stitch, I'll go over and I'll like really stretch it out like that then under and hook it out, pull it through. Now you see this loop is gonna be way longer than the other ones. So that's how you'd make it if it, you would make it really long. Now I don't really want it that long, so I'm gonna undo that. But it's kind of cool that you can make it as long as you want. You can essentially crochet an entire rug if you if you would like to. But once you get going here, you can get them. You can make them really quick. And gosh, it is a really fun stitch to make. I really enjoy it. So, like I was saying, you can do this in the round, um, especially if you're turning after each round. Uh, 
in the round meaning you know going in a circle so if you wanted to make a circle of of um grass it's most easy if you're turning after each round but you can do it uh just in a spiral it's just the grass might be a little bit densely packed so you might want to switch off each round like we're doing in this in these rows how we're switching off between half double crochets and the loop stitch which you'll see we're going to switch back to a half double crochet round row after um we're done with this row here you always want the grass to be facing the same way obviously so you don't want to keep doing loop stitches after return or else the grass will be facing the wrong way so we're just about done with this row here just a couple more oopsies I lost it if you lose it don't worry about it just just do it again you can always work backwards you can always undo it okay this is gonna be our last stitch here if you want to count back Again, just count the, the V's on the top there, just like so. Just count those stitches. Okay, and now we can turn it around. Again, we're going to turn the same direction as we always do. And here you can see all of our little loops. So when we're done here, we're going to cut these loops to make them into grass. Between these rounds, I find that doing half double crochets is the best. Uh, so you basically, we're going to go back across by doing a half double crochets back across. So for example, let's just do it really quick to show you. Once we've turned for our third row, after doing a row of loop stitches, we want to chain two. So we're going to yarn over and chain two. So that way we have you know the same distance up again. Then we're going to yarn over and do half double crochets into each stitch across. So we're going to skip our chains here, go under both of these loops like so, and just do a half double crochet. So we're going to pull through, yarn over, and pull through all those to do a half double crochet. And we're just going to keep doing half double crochets across. And the reason we want to do that is we want to give, uh, well, two reasons. One, we want to... Um, we want the grass to be facing the same way. So if we did a loop stitch here, then the grass would be on the wrong side of our piece. And the second reason is we want to give a little bit of space in between uh, our grass. So I've done a few different um, tests here to, to, get a, to get a distance that's good. I find that doing half double crochets is best, not only because it keeps everything the same, you know, we're doing half double crochets all the way around it, but, um, it also makes the grass not too densely packed in on itself. So I've I've experimented by doing single crochets in between loop stitch rounds um, and double crochets between loop stitch rounds to see what kind of distance is best. And I find half double crochets are the best. Let me show you this piece. This grass patch that I made here is with single crochet stitches in between the uh, the grass pieces. And you can see it's really densely packed um, uh, grass here so if you look at the back it'll look a little bit different it's kind of hard to tell but there are the the stitches in between the grass stitches are actually single crochets instead of half double crochets in this little bitty patch it's kind of hard to tell to get a good idea of what it looks like because it's so tiny but in this little pity patch here I did half double crochets just like we're doing right here and it it looks a little bit I I, I find it's just the best it's just the easiest and the best way to do it um you can't really tell there's a little gap in between it, you really can't tell when there's a a bunch of grass um but yeah i find doing half double crochets is the best also it makes it bigger quicker um this took a lot longer to get uh the same size as i would if i did half double crochets i'd have to do a lot less stitches so we'll just put these to the side those are my experiments oopsies and let's just continue across here. So we'll just keep doing half double crochets across. Hey, if you like this video, please like it down below and uh, subscribe to my channel here. Uh, I am I try to do videos like this as often as possible. And if you like any of my patterns, check them out. Go to clubcrochet.com. You can check out all my patterns. Uh, and yeah. Also, let me know in the comments if you have any questions whatsoever or you need any more... Um, uh, specifics. Obviously, we're not done with this tutorial, so I'm going to get to more uh, instructions as I get going. But 
Uh, if you have any questions, I'm always in the comments, so I'm I'm always ready to check in on that. Okay, so we have our second round of just half double crochets. We've done first round of half double crochets, our loop stitches, then another round of half double crochets. Now for round four, what we're going to do is we're going to turn our piece around again and just do loop stitches back across. So we're going to chain two, just like we've been doing. One and two, and we're going to do our loop stitch again. Now again, uh, just a quick reminder, it's yarn over, go into the next stitch under both those loops, and we go over, under, hook, hook. Pull it through the loop, transition to a pinch, and transition that pinch to the opposite index and middle finger, and then yarn over and pull that through. Obviously, I'm using the spoon grip for all this. You can do it with the pencil grip, but I find it's much more difficult than doing it with the spoon grip. Um, I find it's quicker and easier to do spoon grip. So I'm going to go ahead and do a few more rounds of these grass and then transitioning from grass to half double crochets and we'll cut back and I'll show you how you can turn these loop stitches into grass. And there's a few different ways to do that um, that I've found. Okay, so I'm coming upon the last stitch in uh, my loop stitches here, and I noticed one thing that I forgot to mention, uh, and that being, be careful not to get your crochet hook accidentally into another loop stitch like that as you're trying to crochet. Um, that is something you have to watch out for, so make sure to hold these loop stitches down as you're going. Uh, I should have mentioned that a little sooner, and I'm sorry about that. But we're done with our loop stitches here. I tried to make a perfect square um, and I always like to finish with loop stitches instead of finishing with a round of half double crochet. So I did six rounds of loop stitches and 12 rounds total because there's a round of half double crochets between the loop stitches. So once you finish uh, that up, what you want to do is we can cut the yarn. You can leave uh, however long of an end you'd like and we'll just chain one and pull that through. And we can hide this end into our piece um, to make it just look like another piece of grass. Okay, so before we cut all of our loops here, we want to hide this end in. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our darning needle here and thread it on these ends. And we can just hide them in and make sure that they're they're on the same uh, facing the same way as our loops. So what I like to do is I'm just going to go into a few stitches. Doesn't really matter. I'm just going to kind of like throw it in there and then just make sure that it's coming out this way and I'll do that with both these ends um, which the, that's what's great about this uh, making it into grass is that you can just take these loops and no one will no one will know the difference anyhow I also find that it's best to make um, more rounds of grass than less because it looks more like grass the more rounds you put in there. So let's start by, let's just cut these ends so that they're about going to be like the same length as our grass, about that long, and throw that to the side. Now let me show you how you can cut these loops. There's a few different ways you can do. You can just go loop by loop and cut them each one. Uh, once you cut a loop, it's fine. It won't get pulled out at all. Um, it's actually like knotted in there, so it's not going to get pulled apart. Uh, but once you cut the loops, you can't undo the cut, obviously. So make sure that you like it and make sure you like the distance of your of your things. If you don't like the distance of your loops, you can get a little bit extra give by just pulling it and it'll tighten up the stitches and give you a little bit more um, of your loop. So it's kind of a nice little trick there. So the, the easiest way is just to go loop by loop and just cut each one of them. Just going into each one. I like, because it's pretty fun to do, I like gathering up a bunch of loops onto the scissors and then cutting them all at the same time. I just think it's satisfying. So we'll just finish up this row. I, I just like doing it row by row. Okay, so there's our first row cut. Another way you can do it is if you have a like a stick like this, you can actually just load up a stick of these stitches. Let's use the back of it actually. And you can just load up the stick with stitches. We'll just do it for, well, let's go ahead and do it for the whole thing. And it's easier to load up the stick with stitches than it is to load up a, 
scissors with them. You can actually just load up the stick. And this way you can also just like stretch out the stitches if you want to. And then you could just take your, your scissors and just cut along the stick, which actually makes it slightly easier um, and kind of fun. So those are the two ways that I found are my fo my favorite ways to cut these uh, the grass itself. So you can see how the grass really fills in. And once you have them all cut, you can just like, move it around and it'll it'll fill in the rest of it. And like I said, these have half double crochet stitches between the rounds of grass, but this one actually has single crochet stitches between the rounds of grass. And you can see it's a lot more dense. So if you really want some density into your um, grass, that's the way to do it is to do single crochets instead of half double crochets between each of those rounds. I'll go ahead and cut these loops here and then um, show you the finished product. Okay, so I went ahead and cut all of the ends here and let's just, you know, mess it up a little bit, make it a little messy so it looks more like grass. And you can see it really just fills in. It, it's like you don't really need the single crochet rounds if you don't want it. Um, and this, this by doing half double crochets, it's just quicker. You can make a larger piece quicker uh, and it's easier to make things like squares like this, perfect square. Okay, so thank you guys so much for watching this video. Again, if you like this video, please like it down below, subscribe to the channel, um, and check out clubcrochet.com if you want some patterns like this bonsai tree pattern, uh, which is the newest one on in the Club Crochet library. I come up with new patterns each month, um, and there's a huge library of patterns that I've made, including cute things like little pies and little amigurumi. You can check out my tabletop game, Stitched. It's uh, at, you can find that at stitchthegame.com. You can find links in the description below as well. It's a really cool tabletop game where you crochet all your pieces. And I use this grass a lot in that uh, tabletop game. Thanks again for watching. Pasta la pizza and happy hooking. Bye. What, what do I do here? Usually I do use amigurumi and I just go like this, but this is grass. Let's just go like this.